So along with the novel coronavirus, we have the novel way of wearing PPE. And the reason we have to do that is we have to upgrade our PPE to match the risk. Before HIV, dentists used to operate just with clean washed hands, just water and soap, operate and then wash their hands. But after HIV, there was an upgrade to wearing gloves to prevent transmission of a blood-borne disease. And later in the 90s, we realized that diseases were also transmitted by not only direct contact and blood-borne, but also droplet, which are small particles, about five to 10 microns, as well as aerosol, which is, or which is droplet nuclei, much smaller, about 10th the size of the droplet. And that's what we think happens in high-speed drills um, in dentistry. The risk of transmission of COVID goes up because of the risk of aerosolization of the, of the virus. So how do we go about preparing ourselves? First of all, we get rid of anything that's on our body that we won't be using. The phone we might have to access during surgery. So we place that in a plastic bag. In a, and the inside of the bag then becomes, becomes a sterile part. And it means that we can access the phone from the outside without contaminating it because it'd be very hard to decontaminate that. We place it in a bin and we place any jewellery, obviously I can't get rid of this, but anything else that we can dispose of, we get rid of it and we put it in this bin. Done. Next, we protect our head, our hair, we get rid of all our hair. And we literally try to cover as much of our face as we can this way. Next, we do hand technique. So we wash our hands, we wash our hands. And we make sure that we displace any dirt and we go under the fingernails, which should be clean, and we cover up to midway to the elbow. And then we let the alcohol dry. So it's got to be alcohol-based sanitizer. The World Health Organization dictates that it should be over 70% alcohol. Next, we'll go to our feet. And I've deliberately worn my normal shoes and they have to be covered. It's preferable to wear shoes that can be washed and that can be washed using uh, sodium hypochloride. But these ones I'll be able to dispose of. Again, perform hand washing technique. And notice that I don't use the palm of my hand, I use the elbow or my forearm to depress the trigger. And again, the same thing. Next, I'll cover my body and I use a gown for that. And I make sure basically I cover my arms and forearms, that's the most important part and I rise it high in the neck. And then I wrap it around to make sure my back is covered as well. So my whole body is covered. Okay, next I will move to covering my face and that involves covering my mouth and nose, my eyes. So to cover the eyes, I'll have goggles as well as a visor and there's different designs. So I've, I've put down a few different designs. Notice that the uh, masks are called N95s. They're also called P2 in the European system. N95 means that it removes 95% of particulate matter out of the air, which means those droplets and those microns I was talking about before. Uh, and, it, and it is tested uh, to remove that. The surgical masks, unfortunately, uh, do not filter the air laterally. So it protects the, the wearer, uh, doesn't actually protect the wearer, it protects the other person from getting spittoons. The N95s, I'll demonstrate this one first. I grab the front of it with my clean hand. And then you can see I've already reused it once. And I can discuss that later, but they can, they can be reused provided they're used properly. I grab both the straps 
I put the bottom of the N95 under my chin and then I manoeuvre with my other hand the straps to the back. One of the straps needs to go below my ear and one of the straps needs to go above. So there's one above and one below. And then I perform what's called a fit test, which is I put my hand on the top and I make sure that it fits over my nose. I cup around and I take a breath in. Now this has got an inspiratory valve and expiratory valve, so you can actually feel, I can actually feel the, the mask sucking in and out and I don't feel any air coming in and out. So they recommend you take a normal breath and a big breath. And I don't know if you can see it, but it actually sucks into the side. So that's the mask. I'll demonstrate the others later. Then I put on my eye protection, which is the goggle. So it's pretty straightforward. I'll make sure it fits nicely. And then the next one is the visor. So I place the visor over my face. There we are. I'm going to make sure that it covers my face. So next will be the uh, glove. And again, before doing the gloves, I just sanitize quickly. Use the hand sanitizer. And then I will put two pairs of gloves. I will put a pair of gloves on top of my cuffs and then I'll put one below. So oops, nice one. So this is the first one, which I've managed to break, but you get the idea. The second one covers. So both of them cover, I'd have to replace this, but you get the idea. Cover the bottom of my arm and they cover the cuff. And then on top of that, I place a second mask, which will be the one that I can remove if it becomes contaminated. There we are. I'm ready to go. Now the surgery is over. Now it's time to get rid of all this gear. It's called doffing. So the first thing is you get to get rid of these, you want to not contaminate your arm. So you grab the middle of the glove and you bunch it up together, like so, in the middle of the second glove. And then with the index finger, you slide it under the top of the second and you basically try to encapsulate all of the dirty part of the glove. And that can go into the bin. Boom. Then you can do a little bit of a hand technique, a little hand wash technique. There we go. Because usually if there's been any hole, there could be contamination. And then I remove, I start from the bottom, take my shoes off. And again, a bit of a hand wash. If you consider the hand wash, then you just do it. The next thing that will come off is this. So, and there's a bit of a trick to this one because it needs to be rolled so that it doesn't get flushed around. So just roll it to try to contain any dirt or any virus in front of it. See how I'm just sort of rolling it on itself. And then I bring it to the bin and I dispose of it in the bin without trying to splash around. And I take the gloves off with it as it goes. That's that. So now my hands are definitely dirty. So a bit more. Of the hand washing. 
And now doffing the top. So this one's the most critical part because we want to protect airway and eyes. So first of all, I remove this. So if it's disposable, it goes in the bin. If it's non-disposable, it goes in the sink because it needs to be uh, disinfected. The next thing I'll take off is my eye protection. And again, this needs to go in the sink because it needs to be disinfected. And the last thing I'll take off is my mask. It's really important that my mask does not touch my face because now the outside of the mask is completely contaminated. So I go to the side of the mask and I bring both the top and the bottom together so I can grab them with one hand. And I'll bring it to the top and it looks like my hair will come off about the same time. Go down to the side and it becomes easier with time. Lift it out. I close my eyes. And I take it off. And this now goes to the bin. If it doesn't go to the bin, I make sure the outside that's contaminated sits like I have over here on a protective surface because the top is the part that cannot be contaminated, that, that is contaminated and that needs to actually be disinfected.